Welcome to my living room. Welcome also to the third COVID-19 at home workshop series. So today we're just going to do some general conditioning and I will explain as we go. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so for this workout, you'll need a tiny bit of space designed with New Yorkers in mind. You will also need a TheraBand, though it's possible to do all the exercises without a TheraBand. And you can get kind of creative with weights. If you have a jug of milk or a backpack full of books or just straight up weights, those will be great to use for some of these exercises. And the video is created so that you can follow along for all three sets of each superset. Enjoy! So we'll start off our warm up with single leg bridges. As you can see, one foot will be on the ground, palms facing straight up, and you will bridge your hips straight up to the ceiling. And I want you to make sure that you're not arching through your low back and you're using the back of your hips, so your glutes and your hamstrings to get your hips up into the air. Also, he's ha he has really good form here. You can see that his hips go evenly up and evenly down and that they don't rotate as they go up towards the ceiling. So you'll do about 10 on each side or you'll go to your fatigue. Next exercise we'll do is the quadruped bird dog. You'll be on all fours. Look at how he maintains an awesome neutral spine throughout this whole exercise. And you'll alternate lifting opposite arm and leg. He's going to do eight repetitions on each side. You wanna make sure that you extend your leg using your glutes and your hamstrings. And again, not by arching your back. And you also wanna make sure that you're not shifting your hips from side to side as you go. So you really have to use your core for this exercise. And if you want, you can attach a TheraBand to your foot um, and hold it in your opposite arm while you extend and just do all of your repetitions on one side for an extra core challenge. Okay, set two, you're on your own. Here you go. And here we go for set number three.
Okay, now that you're a little warm, we'll move on to superset number one, which has reverse lunges and quadruped tees. So we'll start with reverse lunges. So he's going to alternate. He's going to go straight back and come on up and then switch legs and straight back and come on up. He'll do 10 on each side in this set, but again, you're going to take it to your own level of fatigue. Um, a couple things I want you to note. Number one, when he goes back, his torso is staying relatively up and down, though yours can pitch forward slightly, though not too much. Uh, he's maintaining really good alignment in his lower leg, right? So his hip, knee, and his second toe are generally in a line, though this won't be the picture for absolutely everyone, depending on what your body type is. And he's holding his hands to his chest because when we initially shot this, he was uh, rounding his upper back a little bit. So this is a good reminder for him to keep his chest upright. Um, if you have a weight, you can hold it where his hands are clasped or you can get creative and put a backpack full of books on your back to give yourself a little extra load. But again, you don't have to go to 10 repetitions if that is too much, given the load that you've chosen, only go to your level of fatigue. Next exercise we're gonna do is the quadruped T. So as you can see, he's again in all fours position. He's got his TheraBand. He's bringing his arm straight out to the side. And when he's going to the side, he's thinking about his shoulder blade going back towards his spine. Notice I didn't say down and back, just straight back. So we're getting those muscles that if you are sitting slouched, looking at your phone all day, <laughs> um, these muscles are not working as efficiently as possible. So this is a good chance to get those mid trap muscles. So he's gonna go ahead and do 10 on each side, but again, you go to your level of fatigue. If you feel your upper traps taken over, then you're done. And he's keep doing a really good job keeping his spine in neutral. All right, set two, here we go. And now for the last set.
Okay, now we're moving on to the second superset, which has single leg hip hinges and rotating planks. So we'll go ahead and start with the single leg hip hinge. So he's gonna start by standing on one leg and he's going to hinge his torso forward and move his hips back in space and then stand straight up. So difference on this one is we're pitching the torso forward and the hips are moving backwards as much as possible as if you're trying to touch your hips to an imaginary wall behind you. And then you're standing using your hip extensors or your glutes and then hamstrings, which is a little bit different from the reverse lunge that we did. So we're being creative with our weights here. So we're using a TheraBand to give us a little bit of extra load when we returned to standing in this flat back or single leg hip hinge. So he's going to do eight repetitions on each side and then he will switch. So the other thing to note is if you have trouble with the balancing aspect of this exercise, you can take that back leg and instead of bringing it off the ground from the get-go, you can slide it along the floor so that you have a little extra stability. One thing I tend to see um, in dancers specifically with this exercise is that they like to arch their backs as they go down. I want you to be super careful to keep your back really straight and to not let your ribs kind of flare out. And I also want you to keep in mind that he has really nice alignment. His hip, his knee, and his second toe are in a line the whole time. So he'll finish his eight reps, which is to his fatigue point, and then we'll move on. And now we're gonna go into a rotating plank. Notice he starts in a plank and then does a really nice job keeping his spine in neutral as he rotates to one side. A lot of times I see dancers move first with their hips so that their spines twist as they do this exercise, but it's actually super key, uh, key to keep everything in alignment. So in order to do that, I often cue people to think about moving with their shoulder first. Also note that as he goes into a side plank, he falls onto the sides of his feet so that he can come all the way up to the side. Make sure that you have control moving into the side plank and then back into the plank. And now for set number two. And lastly, set three.
And as always, there are a few things to remember. One, do each exercise to fatigue. If the exercises hurt, please stop. They shouldn't. And lastly, if you have questions, go ahead and email me. And thanks so much for listening.